we're always told solving climate change is sacrifice, don't eat red meat, you know, don't fly. What we're telling you is please dance more. So this is definitely one of the better known venues in Glasgow and it always gets really sweaty and I tend to be kind of near the front or the middle of the crowd and it just gets so hot in there. And so I was kind of aware that that happens for, for a long time, you know, the last 12, 15 years. So having been to plenty of clubs and also working in geothermal energy, which includes thermal storage, I thought instead of us chucking all that waste heat out into the atmosphere and then burning gas the next morning to heat the place up before people come, let's just store that heat. What was your first thought when David came to you with this idea? Yeah, I mean, I think the first time you mention it to anyone, it's just like, that's absolutely ridiculous. The next thing people ask is, does it smell? And you're like, no, no, it doesn't, it doesn't it, at all. It starts with a big box above the dance floor that sucks up warm air from the clubbers. The heat from that air is extracted and transferred into fluids using the same technology that's in your fridge. That heat travels through copper pipes to a room where the heat is transferred again through the heat pumps into water. That water is pumped down 200 meters into the earth through a series of pipe loops, transferring the heat into the ground as it travels. That heat is now stored for future use, and we can bring it back up again using exactly the same process we used to store it there in the first place. So there's actually a borehole underneath the ground right here, a few meters down, and we've got 12 of them out here. Yeah, so the whole project all in, now that it's finished, I think is 600,000 pounds. So that's about a million Australian. Yeah, yeah. So we've estimated it's gonna pay back over about five years, uh, and that's from energy savings. So that's a, a, a really good payback. So we just left the community garden and the pipes are running underneath us right here coming into our uh, plant room, which is where the magic happens. All righty, come on in. So power supply, uh, heat pumps, circulating pipes. These are also interfacing into the building. Yeah, so currently we're circulating water into the boreholes at 18 degrees, and we're circulating it back out at 14 degrees. So when you're not doing anything, you might generate 150 watts of heat, but when you're dancing full pelt, you could generate anywhere between 500 and 600 watts. So you got a thousand people in here dancing really hard, you could be heating up about 65 houses with that heat. Um, and that's a lot of gas that's not being burned. In the UK, about 50% of our energy demand is for heating, and it's about 40% of our carbon emissions it's similar on a global scale if you look at both heating and cooling. We just don't really think about it, but so much fossil energy is used just to heat and cool our buildings, just to keep us comfortable. And it's enormously wasteful. We should be all talking about geothermal energy as the renewable energy source that's gonna get us away from fossil fuels because it is the most efficient, uh, lowest cost way of doing renewable heating. What's really struck a chord with our audience in particular is how they are participating in the system. So it's not like an environmental system that's been kind of conjured up by scientists and it does feel very removed. It's, no, you come to the venue, you come to the club, you come to the gig and by dancing and enjoying yourself, you are contributing to a net zero heating and cooling system. So what dance moves generate the most heat? Well, I mean, show you. Show me. Oh, not the one. The one, the one, the one. Woo! Everyone kind of does the same two step. I don't know. It's that, I don't know. So I'm sure we're going to be coming out with some, some papers on this and, and stats, but I think I have a feeling already, and I think it's drum and bass. I think drum and bass generates the most heat because uh, I've been in some very sweaty John Bass gigs.